This is part of the theory component of our IV workshop. This is learning to manually set IVs. Let's say we have a disaster. We have a nuclear attack, or we have a tornado, or we have uh, something that happens, or we have COVID, okay? And we run out of all the IV pumps in the hospital. We have no more IV pumps. We can't put a patient on IV fluids and then just let it randomly run at any rate. So now the state board is requiring us to teach manual calculation. We started it about five years ago and how to manually set an IV to drip 125 cc's an hour. It was easy on the pump. Remember, pumps deliver cc's per hour, so we just set it for 125. It's not so easily when you have to manually set it. You have to figure out how many drops you want that IV to drop in a minute so that in an hour, you deliver 125 cc's. All right? The formula is easy. You need to memorize the formula. It's fluid, that means IV fluid. Your standard IV bags, it doesn't say a thousand cc's here, but we've seen in our other videos that a bag of IV fluid, the standard is a thousand cc's, all right? So it's fluid over time in minutes times your drop factor. Well, what is your drop factor? Your drop factor comes on your IV tubing. And it's this particular IV tubing, primary tubing, so it's for a main bag, delivers 15 drops per cc. That's your drop factor. Some of them are 15, some of them are 12, some of them are 60. So you have to look at your package to know your drop factor. So I've looked at my package and I know my drop factor. So here's my doctor's order. Start an IV of D5W, that's dextrose 5% in water, at 125 cc's an hour. All right, so it says 125 cc's an hour, and my fluid calls for time in minutes. So if I have a 1,000 cc bag of D5W in my hand, and I want it 125 cc's an hour, what at, well, well, at 125 cc's an hour, how many hours will it take for 1,000 cc's to infuse? So 1,000 cc's divided by 125 is eight hours. Then all I have to do is take my eight hours times 60 minutes to get my time in minutes, 480 minutes. So eight hours is the same thing as 480 minutes. So now I can plug in my formula. My fluid is 1,000 cc's, my time in minutes I converted it from cc's per hour to time in minutes is 480 times my drop factor that I got off my package. So 1,000 times 12 is 12,000. 480 times one is 480. So 12,000 divided by 480 is 25 drops a minute. So if I set this IV to deliver 25 drops in a minute, I will run an IV at 125 cc's an hour. All right? Now I'm gonna show you a little trick when we go manually set them. But when, now I have to go stand in front of the IV and set it to drop 20, 25 drops in a minute. And I have to take my IV and watch my second hand and count how many times it's dropping in a minute and control it with my controller on the tubing. Well, you don't want to stand there and over and over and over count for a minute. So divide your 25 drops in a minute by four because there's four sets of 15 seconds in a minute. 25 divided by four is six. So then when I go to set my IV, I'm gonna to try to get six drops in 15 seconds. If I can get six drops in 15 seconds, I'll have 24 to five drops in a minute. And it's always to be one drop uh, over then one drop behind. So we'll manually do that in just a second after we've calculated them. All right, here's a second order. The doctor writes an order for 500 cc's of normal saline to infuse over an hour. The patient's going into shock and we're gonna do what's called a fluid challenge. We're gonna run the IV fluids in over an hour, but I don't have any pumps. We've run out of pumps, all right? or we don't have electricity. We've had a hurricane, we don't have electricity. The batteries in the pumps have run down. So I have no electricity. 
so I have to manually set it. So again, fluid over time in minutes times my drop factor. So I have 500 cc's of fluid, but the doctor said he wants to go in in an hour, so an hour has 60 minutes. Then my drop factor on this particular tubing, which I got it off of the package, is 15. So 500 times 15 is 7,500. 60 times one is 60. 7,500 divided by 60 is 125 drops a minute. Now that's a lot because I'm trying to get it in in an hour, guys. So that's my drops per minute. Now I have to go manually set the IV. So how many drops do I want it to drop in 15 seconds? So I end up with 125 in a minute. That would be a lot to try to stand there and count for a minute. So 125 divided by four is 31 drops. So I can try to scroll it up and down till I get 31 drops in 15 seconds and I'll end up with 125 drops in a minute. Now we're gonna go over to the IVs that I have set up and I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? So just walk with me. In checkoff, you will have three problems that you have to calculate. Then you show me your answers, and if you calculate it unsuccessfully, you can set the three IVs. You will set the three IVs, and then one of us will check behind you to see that you have the proper drops per minute. Now, as you can see, all these IV fluids are going into a trash can. Leave them like that so we don't get IV fluid all over the floor. When you walk away from this, you make sure all your clamps are all the way down which means the IVs are cut off. Otherwise, we're gonna walk in the next day. All of these bags are gonna be empty, all right? And all the fluid's gonna run over the trash can and be on the floor, and I don't have an unlimited supply of IV bags, all right? Um, so this is called your drip chamber. If you'll look real close, you can see a little line right there. You want fluid down into the drip chamber to that line. So you just squeeze it to fill it, okay? Now, do you see I have air where I can see the drop drop? All right, I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna control how fast it drops by either working the scroll up Let me get it, it's kind of, now. Look how fast in it when I go up. If I need to slow it down, then I'm gonna scroll the dial toward my hand. Up is fast, down is slow. And I put my watch right here where I can see the 15 seconds. And let's see, let's say I needed eight drops in 15. One, two, three, four, five, Six, so I need to go a little faster, don't I? So I'm gonna speed it up. And now we'll count it again. We'll wait till it gets to three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a little fast. I gotta slow it, I gotta slow it down. Here we go again. See how it's easier to count it in 15 than in a minute? One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight drops in 15 seconds, which would be about 31 drops a minute, which would deliver an IV at 125 cc's an hour. And that's how you do it. Now I wanna show you one more thing before we close off this video. This is called a macro drip. Do you see how large the drop is? Do you see the little wire hanging down in this one? This is called a, a uh, micro, M-I-C-R-O. It is a tiny, tiny, tiny drop. Let me get it to run. Look at the difference in the drop size for your micro drip. Let me get it going good. compared to your macro drip. Do you see that? Can mm -hmm. you see it? All right, now. Move your hand and let it do it. 
to get it dropping. It's not even dropping yet. Well, there you go. See that? All right, now this whole system, this right here is called a Solu set. This is always hung with pediatric patients so that if the IV fluid gets away from you, they don't get thrown into fluid overload. So you fill your chamber here with how many cc's you want, 50 or 100, then you close it. And so now the IV fluid is dripping into the child from here. And so you can, uh, a little bit more is run in, but usually it's about 50 cc's. If it got away from you, you wouldn't throw the, the child into fluid overload, okay? But with a micro drip here, listen to this, drops per minute equals cc's per hour. So there's no calculation with a, with a micro drip. If the doctor wants this child's IV to go at 25 cc's an hour, I set it for 25 drops. Drops per minute equals cc's per hour with a pediatric micro drip. These are often used too with elderly patients. You can get a micro drip like that, the wire coming down in a just a, a IV tubing without the solute set attached. All right, so that shows you how to manually calculate IVs. You'll have to figure three problems and set three IVs. They'll be numbered one, two, three, four, and check off, and the problems will be one, two, three, four. We'll have some sample problems out for you to work and then the problems will change when it comes uh, checkoff time. That concludes manually setting an IV rate.